You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. The AfterBuzz After Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Anger Management After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Anger <laughs> Management After Show. Oh, you can whistle. Hi, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another episode of Anger Management. This is season two, episode seven, Charlie Dates a Teacher. Charlie. I'm your host, Dua Casey, and tonight with me is a very, very good co-host. I am <laughs> the guy who previously has been heard from the booth, <clears throat> the one, the only, Stephen Lemieux. Yes, we, we let him out of the booth tonight, folks. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk in my radio voice this evening. I'm excited. Oh, I've got a radio voice too. Let's do radio voice this evening. All right. Well, Stephen, um, we have lots to discuss. We have uh, we have Lacey at the very very beginning. Did you know it was a dream at the beginning? I mean, we we both had a feeling. Yes, it was. <laughs> there was it was definitely dreamlike. Lacey um, has a dream that she is making out with Charlie. <clears throat> I secretly think it's Charlie Sheen's way to get to make out with every hot girl that walks through the studio door. <laughs> oh, like, well, exactly. What scene can we put them in where I'm making out with this woman? Well, honestly, do you really think that he needs to put them in a scene to make out with them? Well, he could probably, being Charlie Sheen, he probably has previously already made out with everyone on the show. I think it's a prerequisite. You no, know, it is, probably. Audition, you make out, and then whether or not you get hired. No, this isn't exactly like the casting couch, but it's more, <laughs> but I'd say more like, you audition, you get hired, you're on the show, and then you guys go party and get wasted and everyone randomly makes out with Charlie. Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't I wouldn't that sounds it with sounds a, it sounds very sheen. With with a lot of winning involved. Yes. <laughs> Lots of winning. So we have Lacey and she has her dreams. And she has a dream. And uh go ahead, please. And it's kind of like they filmed it kind of like a porn video style where it's just randomly out of the blue, like, Lacey, I need to talk to you. <laughs> She's like, yeah. What do we have here? Yeah. You look very good tonight. We're going to put a label on it? <laughs> yeah. It was good. I have to tell you, Lacey is normally the character that annoys me mm -hmm. the most. Uh, I find her really, you know, like vapid and always negative. I felt like she was kind of funny and funky in this episode. She reminds me so much of Maya Rudolph. Um, really? Yeah. Like, not, not Maya Rudolph herself, but in like... The Ma old Mad TV, I believe it was, where she was doing, like, the very random characters who just kind of stand there and, like, yeah. Like, she reminded me of a lot of that. And it was kind of cool to see it because I haven't seen it in a while. And, yeah, she's, uh, okay. Are you going to say something after everything I say? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. It seemed it seemed this episode like it was almost a little bit over the top, but she was trying to be over the top. And I think that that's what made it funny, because before it was just, a, you know, it was, I felt like she was lukewarm to me. I think that she finally got and I like the idea about the storyline this episode too, having her in a dream, making it funny, like using her sexuality to to um to be a little to be a little funky. Funky. Funk? So should we should we go through the whole lacy thing real quick before we go into the other topics then? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Do you have to speak, my child? Okay. Well. So of course we have Lacey talking to Kate, which is great because of course Charlie's like, oh well, you can't. You got to talk about your woman things. Okay. Well, how about Kate? Uh huh. Which is the worst possible person. <laughs> exactly. The worst possible. So Kate basically lays it on the line. Like, okay. Well, I mean, it's one of those. Um, I forgot what it's called, but doctors get it. If, like, a doctor saves your life, you kind of fall in love with the doctor kind of thing. Is it Florence Nightingale syndrome? Something like that, yeah. It's, it's one of those. with your caretaker, I think. It's, yeah. like, nurses and patients. It's the Florence Nightingale syndrome, I think is what it's called. There you go. It's one of those indromes. And then <laughs> <laughs> the indrome, the Charlie indrome. Not a phobia. It's an indrome. And she, she explains to her that 
that's what's going on. Like, it's just his intelligence and who he is that you're falling for, not him. Mm-hmm. And as she's explaining this, of course, you can just see her, like, shivers down her spine. Yep, like, she you're starts so to smart. Get a little moist, hot, and bothered is what I'm... Exactly. Yep. So you don't know, like, you think that things are going to go on then, but then randomly you see her later, and you think she's in another meeting with Kate, and actually she's not. Kate just kind of, like, starts undoing her bra and gets mm-hmm. really hot and bothered, which... I did like the amount of skin shown in this episode. It's pretty nice. Really? Kate loves showing the skin, which she does. good for her. I mean, she's, she's cougarific. Yeah, she that is that's a, yes. I will agree with that term. Um, she is very very dark and very rigid, but she does she does have some amazing uh, bodily features and show them off. Plus that bra was amazing too. Which yeah. is it's funny too. I um uh Lacey said something when she woke up from her dream where her and Kate, which I also found it interesting on a little sidebar that um, it showed Charlie Sheen and La- Charlie and uh, Lacey kissing, but it did not show Kate and Lacey kissing. Do you think that that was specifically talked about? Like they wanted to do it, but they cut it out. They thought maybe two girls kissing would be too much. Like, what do you think happened there? Because I thought that FX really pushes the boundary of well, um, the reason they didn't have him kiss. Kiss is a kiss is something more passionate. A kiss isn't something as much as, like, sexual but, in most cases. But when you're looking at, like, when her, in her scene with Charlie, it's more like, okay, like, we're putting a label on, like, they had been doing this before. Like, they've been doing the, the eyes at each other. And right. that's when he kisses her. When it's with Kate, it's more like it's completely sexual because, like, she's showing her bra. She's doing that stuff. Like, she was, she's like, I can see your panties. It's not even going... For like the relationship love kind of thing, it's more like it's just let's start, let's get down to business. So like the kiss would have been, I mean, there was no real point to do it. It would have just taken time and not. <laughs> it, it wouldn't have been as funny. Yeah. Because like seeing two girls kiss and then jump into bed is not as funny as seeing just two girls who just have no on previous each other. just pouncing on each other. Yeah. I can see that. That's a good point. That's a good point. But when Lacey wakes up. And she comes to the realization after being groggy. She's like, man, I loved her shoes. Yeah. I feel like that's... Where did she get those shoes? I feel like that's such a girl thing. I'm sitting here talking about how much I loved um, Selma, Selma Blair's bra and her, you know, and then all the guys are going to be like, well, her boobs were great. And that's such just a, a female thing. It's like, <laughs> man, nice boots. Oh, nice legs. You know, it's just, that's just where it, just where it veers off to. Um, let's talk about Sam's OCD. Yes. I wish we had a cute soundbite for that. Like, Sam's OCD. After Buzz TV, <laughs> Sam's OCD. <laughs> we need more explosions in every single bumper we have here. <laughs> this this studio will explode after I'm through with it. Bumpers. There we go. After Buzz TV, OCD, <laughs> Sam style, anger uh, management, Charlie Oshin Oshin D. I, uh, no, I like that. that didn't work. I, li- I like that we're talking about. Um, Sam a little bit more and she's growing up a little bit more it kind of is opening the door for more storylines but they did touch base on her OCD um, how she uh, she gets straight A's across the board she's not getting an A for the specific teacher so um, long story short Charlie has to bring over a vacuum because she is so uh, she's so flustered she's actually been vacuuming the house for about seven hours and has murdered their previous vacuum and let me tell you it's not even OCD like that will piss anyone the fuck off like pardon my french but seriously like i've had a teach i had a teacher in high school that was the same way you would do good work and they just refused to give you the grade that you deserve for it and then you'd have other students who do half-ass stuff and they just like them so they'd give them the a like did you do a lot of vacuuming as a child i did it wasn't so much vacuuming it was like just stupid stuff like the dishes and I'd like scrub dishes <laughs> really really hard this cup is gonna be so clear <laughs> no I don't know I don't know I didn't really have any tweaks like that it's more like I would just be really really pissed off so I mean I'd kind of prefer her to be vacuuming instead of in Charlie's group yeah well I find it interesting too and I don't know a lot about OCD what the actual disorder is is like but I always saw people that were OCD did things um, 
all the time. It's not like she would just get fixated on one thing and just do a lot of vacuuming. I thought like every time you open a door and shut a door, you have to do something. Like every time you wash your hands, you have to do something. Every time you wash your, like that's not how the disorder works. There's there's various levels of this disorder. And honestly, every single human being has a certain level of obsessive compulsive disorder. Like mm -hmm. when I'm cleaning my, like if I finally get up the notion, okay, I'm gonna clean my room today. It's like, okay, spend an hour cleaning my room, then spend an hour organizing everything, then spend an hour doing this. It's like literally, you don't stop until you're finished. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who have it where, okay, I need to turn off my lights three times before I go to bed. Okay, I need to turn on the hot water, then turn off the hot water before I turn off the cold water, then turn the cold back on, turn that off, and then I'm good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many different variations, and everyone's comes out in different ways, and people, it usually comes out when you're emotional, like for normal people, like you'll have those moments where you're just like, um, I'm so pissed off right now. I just need to get my mind off what I'm pissed off about and start doing something else. Doing and obsessing about something else. And that's what I think the vacuum is coming in because it's yeah. not so much a, it's not so much like I even had like back in back when I was younger. There's the the curb on the road and there's like little lines in the curb and I always mm -hmm. have like a certain number of steps between each line and then like I'd like hold my breath for like a certain one. Like it was weird and I had that to. Was well, that was a thing, though. It's like you can't step on a crack. There was like a whole like nursery rhyme about that, right? Well, yeah, there's the step on a crack, break your mother's back, stupid thing. But I'm talking about like when I was going on walks, I would hold my breath for certain times mm -hmm. depending on how many steps. Like it was really weird and I had to like forcibly break myself of the habit. Hmm. It's just a really it's a really weird mental thing that people develop over time. Interesting, interesting. So, um, in order to in order to kind of um, ease the situation, Charlie goes to meet, have a parent teacher conference with uh, Miss Hibbert. Hibbert. Why do I want, keep wanting to say Miss Hubert? Miss Hibbert. I always want to say like Doctor Hibbert. <laughs> That's it, Doctor Hib yep. Hibbert. There it is. Yeah. Um, and so she is this. Uh, she is very tall, very beautiful, a little bit transvestite looking. I thought. I didn't think so. I. I, I mean, just, she she teachers like I guess if she had like did she have shoulder pads or something? I don't know. I felt like it was her jawline, and I do feel like people as a whole are becoming a little bit more like androgynous, like getting that line between like male and female. Because I I don't know, it's just but she did look. She was just so I think it was her height and her jaw that um. But I mean, don't get me wrong, she was beautiful. But he goes and he uh, he talks to her and she says something to Charlie that is his absolute dream. She says. I am moving to Portugal in two weeks. Um, so if you want to start something, we can, but I'm going to be gone in two weeks. No, she plays it coy. She says, uh, she says, oh, well, at least you came in here and talked to me like this, you know, better than some of the other kids' fathers who come in here and try to, f single fathers who come in here and try to flirt with me to get their grades better. He's like, oh, oh, no, Wait, yeah, oh, that's I'm ridiculous. not one of those. D did you, did you want me to do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he keep, he keeps playing it like even throughout their whole thing he keeps playing it like innocent and not like you know. yeah you're going to Portugal yeah because yeah. <laughs> oh you're really into this you learn the language too for this story yeah I get it uh, and uh, it's it's almost like she ended up asking him out too well you didn't flirt with me I'm going to Portugal pretty do you much wanna, do you want to go out Which, and honestly if you don't want to play games. To all girls, like seriously, if you like somebody, just ask them out. Seriously. Yeah. Cause, or tell them that you're going to Portugal. Because we have no idea what you're fucking thinking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Steven. After Buzz TV exclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Confessions. <laughs> what are all you ladies thinking out there, says Steven. Um, so <clears throat> they end up, which, does this ever happen in life? Does, or does this ever, or does this only happen to Charlie Sheen on TV shows? Does what? That that beautiful teachers are like, I'm going to Portugal in two weeks. Do you want to hook up? I mean, it happens. I wouldn't say like the teacher thing, but like you will meet people who are like, you can meet them, and you if if like the guy asks them out, they'll be like, look, I'm moving in like three weeks. But we could. They always phrase it, we can still have fun. I mean, yeah. that's there it is. I mean, there's always there are there are always those situations that happen, but Charlie just seems like. It's funny because he's the guy who just wants to sleep with everything, and she's like, "Yeah, we can just have fun." And then she's the one who cancels her trip. Yeah, surprise! You know, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, Daryl actually, while sitting in that seat a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the previous episodes, Kate had started to get more feelings. You were engineering that episode. Kate had started to get more feelings, and he asks, "Is it when 
girls say that they are not going to get emotionally involved. Can they actually do that? Like, what do you think about that? Because here you see him just trying to get an A in bed with the teacher. And by him, I mean Charlie. Well, she is starting to get feelings and is now not going to Portugal because of his, you know, because of his A plus sex. Um, Can women just keep it, keep emotions out of it? Yes, but like, I mean, it's the same for guys and women, honestly. Uh, I'll answer probably the same way Daryl answered, and it's like everyone's different. Um, Mm -hmm. Kind of the way it seemed with him, Charlie was saying the wrong kind of stuff. I mean, they were they were going at it, and he was doing even more, like going above and beyond than he would usually do because he thinks it's going to affect her grades. She might take that as something else, and what he says is he's like, I really like, yeah, we definitely have something going here. Like, don't say stuff like that. Like, if you're going (laughs) to... Pardon my French, but if it's oh, I'll just I won't even curse. I'll just if you're screwing, you're screwing. You're not cuddling afterwards. Mm-hmm. Cuddling is like cuddling means you care. No, yeah. I mean, honestly, if if you're gonna have a relationship where you're with someone mm-hmm. and it's strictly that, it's just got to be strictly that, and then clothes are back on. You're doing your other stuff. Mm-hmm. But like literally, if you're if you're with someone and you're trying to just do that, and then you spend so much time with them, it's like being close to somebody kind of naturally human mind wise gets you involved with them. It is true because when you're close, actually the touch, uh, there's something called um, oxytocin, oxy, I think it's oxytocin. I could be pronouncing that wrong. Um, It is, it's a, it's something that is generated in your brain. It releases in your brain. It causes pleasure. That's why simply the hugging another person releases this oxytocin. That's why that's why people like pillow talk after sex. People will open up more than they normally will because they've released a whole bunch of oxytocin and they're just relaxed and calm. Well, yeah, of course. And it's just like one of those things like there's F buddies and then there's like friends with benefits that turn into something else and it always ends poorly. <laughs> uh, um, I love I absolutely love Charlie's friend Mike I'm going to talk about him he's for a minute he's pretty hilarious he's really funny I always love the scenes with him um, I the scene on the couch when they were using that we were talking about it's a double entendre or a Marissa what did you call it double entendre it is a double entendre when they were they were completely talking about um Charlie's ex-wife thought that they were talking about Sam's grade, and Mike, Sam's friend, thought that knew that they were talking about uh, Charlie's sexual performance, and yet they were talking about you know pushing it a little bit harder. Hopefully, you'll get that A. The scenes like that always, I find them, I always find them hilarious. I thought the writing was really, really witty this episode. Um, The past couple of episodes, I was like. "Mm -hmm." But I really, I really liked it. Um, and I liked Mike's, one of my favorite lines of the episode was Mike's line um, when he's talking about uh, how Charlie has made more a uh, more mature form of terrible judgment. Yeah. When Charlie tells him that he's dating, he's dating somebody from Sam's school and he's like, what grade? <laughs> exactly. I saw that coming as soon as he said from the Sam's school. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. You're, you're like, asking for that one. It's like a teacher. And he was like, oh, a more mature form of terrible judgment. Yeah, I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Well, it's just like it's it is the natural way of things to go in TV writing Mm -hmm. where if if you have a child and it's in a school and the dad is single and goes to the school, TV writing will make it happen that the dad will sleep with the teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, We see it in Californication. Yeah, we see it in anger management. Um I'm sure I could probably list off a few other shows if I thought about it for well, a while. Because it leaves the avenue open for situations. And I do feel like this show really pushes the envelope with racist jokes. They, they've they never been shy to tell a racist joke. Like well, um, early, Ed in the beginning. There you go, yeah. With the, it's the trifecta. She was old, a woman, and Asian. And so, and also with the childhood obesity joke with the teacher. She goes, go ahead and sit down in a chair. They're a lot bigger now since all the kids are fat. <laughs> You know, so they really do push the envelope, and I really feel like I, I like the fact that the writers will go there, and I feel like people are so scared to go there. They're afraid that, it, you know, it won't get cleared or they'll get fined, but I like that I like that anger management goes there. Well, again, this is FX. Um, yes, and so, FX always does push that envelope a little bit. Exactly. If this, was, if this was ABC Family, if this was Fox, if this was something else, it probably wouldn't go as well, but then... <laughs> Well, honestly, like because you see you see shows that just 
they have so much potential in that area of dark humor and they just pass it up. Yeah. And you're just like, well, that was unsatisfying. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't watched very many episodes of Anger Management, but the last one I watched I thought was funny. This one I watched was even funnier. I mean, it's it's good to see it. I mean, honestly, even with Two and a Half Men, you had Charlie on Two and a Half Men, they'd keep it. They, they dumbed that show down so much mm-hmm. that it wasn't even enjoyable to watch anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think. If you want to go ahead and rate and comment us on iTunes, tell iTunes. us what you think. <laughs> tell us what you think about the show. Tell us what you think about Selma Blair's boobs. Say it in a radio voice. Tell us what you think about Sam's OCD. Tell us what you think about Sarah's boot. Wait, is it Sarah? It's it's a. Uh, uh, Sam, no, no, not Sam's boobs. Sam's his daughter. Kate. <laughs> Kate. Tell us what you think about Kate's breasticles. You're gonna, you're gonna get different kinds of comments, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Well, I am dating someone from a high school. It's a teacher. It's cool. No, yeah, kidding. it's a teacher. A more mature form of terrible judgment. There you go. Um, I'm a big fan of terrible judgment. There we go. All right, just one more quick thing. We'll touch on the very, very end, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. They finish the show. They end the scene with um, Lacey in bed with everybody in bed with Charlie and of course having another dream Charlie and Kate mm-hmm. and they're now talking about why she you know looks to people of um she looks to people of authority that's why she's been having these dreams and now that she knows that she's having these dreams that you know they're kind of and then what happens at the end Mr. Ed <laughs> Oh, you're not done yet, lady. You still have daddy issues. That's in full, like, in full nightgown dress. Like, I was waiting for him to have, like, the little, like, hat on as well. He's like, we're not quite done yet. Oh, that was hilarious. I thought it would have been pretty funny if he had, like, bondage gear or something on. Oh, like a ball in his mouth? (laughs) Or if he, like, said it and then put the ball in his mouth or something. I don't know. That would have been a little bit over the top, but it would have been comedic golden jelly. (laughs) It would have been all right for FX, though. So, I... I want to just quickly talk about how I'm drawing this little umbrella. But no, I want to quickly talk about <laughs> how they tie, they do tie the storylines together. Because we do have, um, it's the authority figure. It is the putting, putting something mental onto an authority figure and making you kind of have that attraction to them. Mm-hmm. So when we see this, we see this with... Um, what am I trying to say? We see this with Lacey. It opens up with Lacey, of course, with Charlie Sheen as the authority figure, and he's the therapist, and they're having those kind of things. Then we mm-hmm. see it with Kate as the therapist having those things. And then when Charlie kind of gets into it with the teacher, that is another example of, like, when, even when she said— Because Miss Hibber is the authority figure. Yeah, you're kind of getting into this student-teacher thing, aren't mm-hmm. you? It's like, yeah, I like playing games. It's like that's—I mean, everyone has— Every kid's had a crush on their teacher at one point. Like, everybody has those fantasies to a point of, like, having that person who's, like, your boss or who's a, above you and being able to, like, bring them down to your level in, in that kind of way. So, Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's the whole aspect of we have two storylines going together, but they're different. But they also have the same kind of points from different angles. And Charlie's is with the teacher. Yeah, there definitely was a connecting theme. And I think that was fantasy and authority. Um, and they, she even, Miss Hibbert even said it in bed. She looked at Charlie and she goes, "You really like playing this like student teacher thing." So it was definitely you. I think you you hit the nose, or you hit the nose on the head. You hit, hit the, the nail on the head. The <laughs> um, yeah, I hit the nose. I, English is not my first language. <laughs> favorite you line hit, from you, the oh, go ahead. I, favorite line from this episode is when she's like, "Are you feeling what I'm feeling?" I'm like, "Are you feeling like you have a herniated finger?" <laughs> We've all had that feeling before, like, come on, is this... That, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, and what would he say? Something about, like, my jaw is so tired, my back hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's only so many things you can do with a penis. Oh, and then, and then his wife, his well, ex-wife. When I said that, what did you tell me? Tr- <laughs> keep, tr- trying. keep trying. Keep <laughs> trying. Keep trying. I got to use that one sometime. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Do you have anything else for us before we get into news and gossip? Um, hashtag ABTV winning. <laughs> That's what we'll do. <laughs> if you'd like to buzz in on, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's go ahead and do we have news and gossip? I have a little news and gossip. Yeah. TV news. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, Stephen, but Charlie Sheen is a giving kind of man. He, <gasps> he gives left and right. Well, he's he gives really, to Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. He, uh, well, he's he actually donated uh, ten thousand dollars to a teenager for her therapy dog. So, fifteen-year-old Florida teen Tegan 
Marty. Marty, I think is how you pronounce that. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, she fell. She was at an amusement park, and she fell 100 feet from an amusement park ride Holy back in shoot. 2010 and suffered brain, spine, pelvis, pelvis, and internal injuries, according to the New York Daily News. Um, although she is just learning how to walk again, initially she had no use of her arms and her legs. Charlie Sheen did come to the rescue. He sent $10,000 to the family after hearing about this uh, through his godfather in Wisconsin. And he told the family, if there is need for more, just say so. Um, and, I mean, they're completely 100% grateful. Um, he went on to tell um, the Daily News, people come into your orbit for a reason. You don't always know what that, you know, what that time is. But if you don't, if you ignore these requests, um, you won't have any opportunity, you know, to, to help people out. Um, the dog will actually also be trained to turn on and off the lights and pick things up. And then, of course, generally to just be a friend to Tegan as well. Well, um, I mean, people give... God, it is so loud out there. Um, people give such a bad rep to Charlie for all this recent bullshit with the cocaine and all that stuff and his going off the deep end, what they call it going off the deep end. Mm -hmm. Charlie and, calls it a melt forward. Yeah, his melt forward. And, I mean, honestly, there's so many other celebrities that do the same stuff and end up killing themselves. There's so many other celebrities that did the same stuff and they were assholes before that. Mm -hmm. And people need to give credit where credit's due. Charlie, This is not Charlie Sheen like... Oh, I need to make a better name for myself. Let me give this girl ten thousand dollars. Or mm -hmm. oh, I need to make a better name for myself. Let me give this charity ten. He is actually a celebrity who has been giving millions of dollars to charity from the get -go. his career to now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably given over, let's say, probably over fifty million dollars in his in his whole career mm -hmm. to charity. Yeah. So it's it's kind of ridiculous when I see people who are like, oh my God, look at Charlie Sheen give this ten thousand dollars. It's like, yeah. Well, maybe you should look back and look at how many other instances there was of this. You'd probably be really surprised. Well, and he does, but he also, growing up in the public eye and growing up with a father like Martin Sheen, I think that he knows the number one important thing in entertainment, and that is how to utilize the media. Yeah. Um, he, I think he actually used it to his advantage during his melt forward. Well, yeah, he wouldn't. He would not have had this show if he didn't. Yeah. And if if he if he honestly curled up in a ball, curled up in a ball, and kind of like. Um, seceded from his spotlight, mm -hmm. he would have been kicked off two and a half men. People would have con considered him like the washed up actor because all they would have known, all they would have seen is the articles about how, why he was kicked off two and a half men that the studio put out. Mm -hmm. He created a viral campaign for his image, even if it was, doesn't matter if it's crazy Charlie, doesn't matter if it's um, cocaine Charlie, mm -hmm. it's not kicked off the show Charlie yeah and that's what matters and that's what kind of got him another show is probably what got him anger management is the fact that people the he used the public to his advantage just like Conan O'Brien used the public to his advantage when he lost the show yeah. got his show back with probably 10 times as many followers yeah that's crazy all right well let's get into some predictions and now you're after buzz TV predictions the lights. The lights are blinking. Um, do you have any predictions for us, Stephen? Um. Nope, I do not have any predictions. Um, I predict that there will be uh, an episode surrounding Mike. An episode that actually, um, a storyline episode that actually talks a little bit more about him. Because right now he's just the friend that comes over to pretend to borrow eggs. But now I think we're going to get into a little bit more of him. I think that that's just a wish more than a prediction because I'd like to see a little bit more of him. All right, Steven, where can we find you? Um, actually, can I ask you something real quick? Has yeah. uh, Sam had any boyfriend issues throughout the seasons yet? Not yet. That was a prediction of Anna's a couple episodes okay, back. Okay, because that's what I can see happening. Yep. I can see now that we've had her OCD come out and we've kind of focused on her more, this one might be an introduction to more storylines involving Sam, Sam throughout this season. Okay. It's you a good can, prediction. You can find me on Twitter, at Stephen Lemieux. No spaces. You know the deal. And you can actually help me out <laughs> big time by checking out Facebook.com slash SR Lemieux photo. And if you're in Hollywood and need headshots, you can go ahead and book me because I'm pretty damn fabulous. 
Oh my. I just used the word fabulous. You just used the word damn. I'm Dua Casey. You can check me out on Twitter, Dua Casey, uh, D-U-A-K-A-I-S-S-I. Or you can catch me here, um, not this Monday, but next Monday, and I'm going to be buzzing about Shaw's. Ooh, who's our, who's the our, run, the Iranian. where can we find our booth bookie today? Hi, you can find me on Twitter at Serafini TV. And that is Miss Ser- Marissa Serafini, who you can also find on the Once Upon a Time After Show. Angly. I hear great things about that show. Because it, it's amazing. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Great things about the show, terrible things about the acting. Oh, dear. Oh, snap. That's, a, that's how you want to end the show? That's really how you want to end it? No, no I want to end the show. <laughs> Thank you, <Steve. laughs> Thank you. Winning. <laughs> From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.